Bowers uh, intro. Hey up Smeggies, how you doing? This is my 100th vlog, Smeg Chris Extra as I call them. There's a reason why I'm sat here and I'm talking to you guys. It's because, like I said, this is the 100th episode. This is also the weekend I started on YouTube. So I think it's time I told you why I'm on YouTube or, or basically my YouTube story. That's what this is really. It could get quite boring. There's no real script apart from, well, let me just show you this. It's sort of like bullet points, <laughs> just basically, so I, I actually go in the right order cause, because I'm one of those type of people who I'm telling a story and then I'm sort of backtrack saying, oh, by the way, I did that. And then it sort of messes up the whole timeline of what I'm explaining to you. So, but there is going to be some other footage other than just me sitting here talking to you. I'm going to be showing you some stuff that I've done previously. I feel like I'm doing a presentation. Maybe I should have done a PowerPoint and have it here or up against the camera so you can watch it, I don't know. As of right now, I have 16 subscribers. <laughs> hey, it's better than nothing, you know. Weezy Waiter said that when he got to his one year mark, he had only 32 subscribers. Look at him now. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'll get like that though. But you never know. Let me start right at the beginning. I came out of my mum, no, no. <laughs> I'm not going to start there. Uh, uh, when I was nine years old, I was at school and I used to be in a class called creative writing or, you know, it's like English literature sort of thing. Basically, I was just, you know, we were told in class, go home, make some stories up, little short stories. And I don't remember what I wrote. And I'm sure I've got the book somewhere. This chair. But I, rem I clearly remember the teacher coming up to me one day, uh, none of the other students, she came, she came up to me, or he did, I, I can't actually remember if it's a he or she, but I do remember what they said, and they clearly said, you have an active imagination, that's a gift. So when it came to my 10th birthday, my parents asked me what did I want for my special birthday. I said to my parents, I want a typewriter. And I got that typewriter. My mum told me the other week that she still has the typewriter in their shed. So, you know, that's kind of cool. But I remember it being very, very clunky. I don't remember the make of it, but it was one of those where you, when you're typing, you had to literally hammer the keys down. And sometimes you'd miss a key and scrape another one. And, oh, my fingers went red. They cut, they were sore. So I'd start using that finger and then this finger and sometimes my thumbs, which weren't as good, and then my left. And it was before I was able to properly type sort of thing. So, wah! That just fell out of the bin. Don't do that to me. Scaring me. So after that, I sort of started dabbling in the world of fiction quite often, you know, reading books, for example. And of course, from a young age, I was shown movies or I, I got to view movies, you know, Star Wars, Superman movies, that sort of thing. And from probably the age of 14, I actually started going to the cinema by myself quite often. I started loving movies more and more and then when it came to 1989 I was 14 I started Ghostbusters 2 was coming out and I was really excited for that and so I went to see that. Uh, Back to the Future 2 came out and and then the following year Home Alone came out and I have to say that was the only film I've ever seen three times at the cinema in one week. It was funny because I'd be sat there uh, on the third viewing I'm at the back and I knew I was watching it and I thought something funny is about to happen. I remember it and I start giggling and I could see that somebody next to me is like, what's he laughing at? Because it's funny, it's a good film, I love it. I still love it to this day. Of course, when I went to college, uh, when I turned 16, everything changed for me. You know, life got a lot better. I enjoyed college, I made a lot of friends. I kind of put on weight at that point because until that point I was like this. And then all of a sudden, in fact, I'll show you a picture of what I looked like when I was young. Yeah, <laughs> don't judge me on them shorts, come on. So, <laughs> and then, um, and I put on a lot of weight, but it didn't bother me. I, I was quite happy and I spent uh, three or four years going to college, different colleges, but going to college. It was also around that time I discovered comic books. That's, yeah, my first comic book actually I started um, regularly buying was The Flash. Wally West Flash, by the way. Which is why I was upset that Barry Allen returned because you know Wally West has been put to one side and since the reboot he's sort of gone. 
I've changed topic again. <clears throat> Another thing I discovered around my oh, late teens, I guess, I started listening to more soundtrack music. I'm not exactly sure which one I bought first, but I remember uh, Danny Elfman's Batman. And I, even now, after 22 years, I still think it's one of my favourite soundtracks. It really is awesome. And the thing with soundtracks is, and I'm talking score music rather than, you know, m proper music, you know, hip-hop and all that put onto films. Music inspired by, yeah. The This type of music sort of, when I listen to it at night and I'm in bed, I sort of dream up stories that surround the music. That's totally different to the film that it's from, and it helped my active imagination just to just shoot off into directions and and even I was like, whoa! And I'm, I was writing everything down. I've written everything down since I started writing, really. And I know, yes, why haven't I written a novel yet? I'll get there eventually. I promise. Whether it gets published, yeah. As a matter of fact, soundtracks still do that to me. I my latest score music that I listen to quite often is Tron Legacy. I love that Daft Punk. But the one that I keep listening to all the time is Iron Man. Um what's his name? Ram Hold on. Ramin Juadi Juadi? Ramin Juadi? Something like that. I actually have that soundtrack in my car and I just keep listening to it every week at least. So, you know, I left college and I started working where I am now. I've been there a long time. But I always have like a notebook in my pocket so I can write ideas down. You know, sometimes I'm just like stood there and like, oh, cool, and I start writing it down. And then there was a dark period in my life during my 20s. I think I was perhaps 24 to maybe the age of 29, 28, 29. I was in a very bad depression. Um, I don't really want to get into it, but all I can tell you is that my active imagination started focusing on all the dark things in my life, you know. Just really, really bad, evil things that just kept floating into my head. And that's what happens when it's like a balance, like scales. You've got good here and you've got bad here. When you're depressed, it goes like this. And it's very hard to get it back because... It's a physical, it's actually a physical condition in the mind. It's called chemical imbalance. And there's quite a number of people out there who have it. Uh, and you know those really happy chipper people who are constantly always excited, always happy, and nothing really gets them down? Their scales are like this, you know, they, and that's their chemical imbalance. But mine, it was like this. And there's a lot of people like that. And what I found was, um, will you stop squeaking? I ended up being on antidepressants and I found that they do not work. They made it go, I was like this, it made it do this. It was making me even worse. So one day I had this breakthrough, I'm going to call it a breakthrough, and I started thinking what exactly was making me depressed. And so I focused on that one thing and I dealt with it. I'm not going into details but there was just a really big thing and I smashed it to pieces and I, and I just went Whoop. And then I started thinking, well, what's the next thing? What else is making me depressed? And I worked that out. Boom. And slowly but surely, then balance, that balance came back. And it's sort of like here now, maybe or there. <laughs> but, you know, there's always a constant battle. And you're always thinking, you know, some things will get you down. Yeah, and that's my advice to people. If you're depressed, don't try antidepressants. They might work for you. They didn't for me. But... Try to focus on what it is that's making you depressed and try and sort it out. I mean, yes, it could be, say, the death of a loved one. That'll take a lot longer to get through. But you will get through it, eventually. Life goes on. And so, you know, eventually I came out of that depression. And as I was coming out of it, the active imagination that was focusing on all the bad stuff suddenly started focusing on the good stuff. I was writing again. I was starting to get into movies more. Well, I say getting into movies, I spent all my time just watching TV, watching movies, reading books, just basically being miserable, <laughs> just sitting in front of TV constantly. I eventually shifted, I eventually moved on from that, and I've never been happier to be quite honest. I uh, did I have a computer, but it was very old, I've still got it, and it still works, which is un unreal. It's been there, f I've had it 14 years now, and it still works. 
but it's very very old it, you know there's no USB ports on it in fact it's only got a disk drive it doesn't even play DVDs it doesn't even know what a DVD is I show it a DVD it'll be going <laughs> so I thought right I'm gonna buy a new computer which is the one that I have upstairs uh, I, the one that was noisy the other day and then I suddenly I, I, I went through the computer and you know databases word pro and all this I discovered Windows Movie Maker Ooh yes <laughs> and that's where my active imagination didn't just stay focused on stories suddenly ideas for videos start popping up see this this is my first ever digital camera doesn't work anymore so why I've got it I don't know there's a like little digital uh, little view screen here the thing with this camera was it filmed uh, videos for six minutes I'm not really sure why I think because back then the I don't think it even was called an SD card back then um, but they only lasted it only lasted six minutes of footage and the other thing is it doesn't have a microphone so there's no sound being picked up so in my head I had this idea that I'm going to make a video that has no sound so I thought a song I've got to have a song involved uh, one of my favorite classical songs is hold on it's very hard to remember the name O Fortuna, or Fortuna, by Carl Orff. And it's a popular classical song. Michael Jackson used it in his Dangerous tour, um, you know, at the beginning of his videos. I don't know if you've ever seen that. So I ended up working, like I've said before, soundtracks help me create stories. I listened to that song and it helped me create this little video, which, without sound, this is it. It's called White Pants Man <laughs> and it was weird because I'd written the scripts on these pieces of paper, two pieces of paper and I said to my brothers right one of you is White Pants Man the other's the bad guy who's going to be with me as a bad guy and so Tony he took that one so it was left to our Philip, Little Bruv, Littlest Bruv was a bad guy, Little Bruv was White Pants Man and this is what it looked like as well. That's how I started doing videos. That was my very first video. That was followed by this character. Who I call Magic Man. Of course it's mean. Basically it, it's like one, two, three and something magical happening. And you know, things ended up on my head like a flashing blue light or a hat. And it was just completely silly but it actually, um, people enjoyed it. I'm going to show you the intro to the next videos that I started making because I did the music for it therefore there's no copyright infringement here you go hold the wheel why? just do it So from the title that's called The Coppers, basically me and my brother, we, I play Dave Scruffy, he plays Michael Crinkle, and so far we've done four episodes, and we're about to do a fifth, that's why this has grown, hair is long, I'm, I'm trying to keep a beard to get used to the fuzz, that's my character, he's called Dave Scruffy, but he's also scruffy, he has long scruffy hair, he has beard, and that's why I've been growing it, that's why I'm like this, because we're about to film... I don't know when, but we're about to get ready to do the fifth one. I've just recently done the screenplay for it, so... And then next came... Have a quick look at this. Hey, I can get your money. Oh? Take a bet with Walter and that I can win the cod race. The cod race? I did six of them. And they're not just short videos, not like Coppers or Magic Man where they're between six to nine minutes long. Bar Wars was between 29 and 49 minutes long of each episode, and there's six, six episodes. And that's where Fwed came from. Let me just show you where Fwed started off. <laughs> he was a user! Off. 
He played Bob R. Finks, and in my stories, he became the enema, the bad guy, here. Carry out Order 69. Yes, sir. Oh, wait. Sorry. That's the order number for the pizza I ordered last night. I meant Order 67. So, yeah, it was totally different. But he's the only character that I quite really enjoyed playing. And as for the voice, the voice I've always been able to do since I was a little kid. And, I mean, people probably think I'm using a sound box. No, I'm not. See, I can do it now. And you're probably thinking I'm doing it a totally different with a sound box, but I'm not. I've just ruined it for you, haven't I? thing with Bar Wars was, after I finished the sixth episode, I kind of had two more stories floating around up here. And I've always said this, and I'm going to keep saying it. I'm a slave to my imagination. And if I don't do something, well. So I ended up doing six more <laughs> Bar Wars films. I call them films rather than videos. Um, that continued the adventures. There was, I'm, I'm not really going to go into it, but there were a whole new characters and more toys brought in into the house. So I ended up doing 12. The music I've been using for all the Bar Wars films were from other films. I mean, the first six I used from the actual six soundtracks of the original Star Wars films. And then through seven through 12, I started using other soundtrack music, you know. Uh, uh, who did I use? I used uh, Close Bedell who did Pirates of the Caribbean 1, Time Machine, and something else. Uh, Basil Paul Doris, who did Robocop, and Hunt for Red October. And the last one I used John Williams, but not just Star Wars, but music from like Indiana Jones and, and Superman and Minority Report, all them. So, so that's Bar Wars. That's like my big thing that I created and did. And a few people have watched it, some have like, What's he doing? Playing with toys. He's, he's filming himself playing with toys. And some have said, it's quite interesting. I love them, mate, so I don't care. And then moving on, not just uh, fictional characters and, and stories that I've done. I've also done like my life stuff. It, I guess you could call them vlogs, actually, of before I actually discovered what a vlog was. Two things. One, it was places to visit. I've done five episodes of them now, six maybe. Where basically if I go away for a day or for a weekend, I film it, me and whoever's with me and just, you know, just basically just show what I'm doing and talking to the camera, showing them things that are pretty, going on rides and and also having what I call musical montages where, you know, if we're travelling long distance, I have a song fit into that time length. And then of course there's my holiday videos, which usually are once a year. You know, I've done two Lanzarotes, a Tenerife, which is when my camcorder started going funny, and I've had to buy a new one since, obviously. I started borrowing my mother's camcorder, and I filmed Scotland, um, I went around there with Joe. Then there was Europe last year, and of course Europe this year. Uh, and again, with those, vi well, the films really, they're between two and three hours long, but all of them, apart from the Tenerife one, because of the dodgy camera, I couldn't film anything really. So that ended up being an half an hour film, but still, most of my films are between two and three hours. And that's where we get to YouTube, because the thing with all these videos and all these films that I've done, I had this burning desire to edit, you know, not just film, but to edit as well, to put these videos together, to put music in, and I just weren't satisfied, I was not satisfying that need at all. And then one day, my friend Laura, who has been in one of my videos before, she introduced me to YouTube. Equal 3 to be exact, which is a Ray William Johnson series. And she let me watch one of those, and I was like, that guy's funny, what, you know, what is it? And she says, he does these videos twice a week. I was like, really? So through him, I, I mean, I, I had heard of YouTube, but I just thought it was a site where people put stupid videos up. Which it is, but I didn't realise people were actually putting up their own proper content, like proper shows. And through Equals Free, I discovered Mika Kitty. Uh, through Mika Kitty, I discovered I Justine. And, you know, and it just went from there. You know, there's Toby Turner, there's Wheezy Waiter. Um, recently, I've just discovered SMP Films, who's been doing it, has been on YouTube for about six years now. And uh, this woman called Kate is 17, 
the people doing these videos are just like me. They like to film, they like to edit, they like to show their lives to people. And that's basically what I've been doing all these years, making these videos. Whether it's scripted or, or it's just a holiday film or whatever, it's still what happens on YouTube. And originally I did a channel called Enigma Warrior 1 because of the character that sometimes shows up, Enigma Warrior, that's his name. I'll not go into explanation of why he's called that. That's um, something people always ask me and I'm like, <laughs> you're not going to know for years. Only I know. Only me. And I, I made his channel and I tried posting White Pants Man on it and a few Coppers videos. And unfortunately, White Pants Man got, uh, I think, muted and Coppers got took off. Uh, and I got an email saying it's copyright infringement. And I was like, well, what's that? So I read up about it. Realised you can't put copyright music onto videos onto YouTube. So that frustrated me a little, but I understood it. So what I did was copper, with Coppers was... What I did originally with the first Coppers episode was I edited it down. So I re-edited it so that the copyrighted music was no longer a part of the film, part of the video. And it posted onto there and it was fine. But I still were, were not finding that satisfaction of, you know, a holiday film once a year. Coppers has become, well, we've not done one for two years now. Bar Wars, I finished last year. So I weren't, I were not getting any of that out. And so I decided I was going to put my own videos onto YouTube. Totally, whole new series, totally, you know, it's going to be me, no characters, well, apart from Fwed and eventually Percy and Clone One and Robo Chris and Mother and Father. Um, so I set about creating Smeg Chris and the reason I called it Smeg Chris, it, it took me a while to come up with a title, um, but I decided because of Red Dwarf and they, talk, they call each other Smeghead a lot. I wanted to emphasise that, you know, I'm a geek, I'm a geek at heart, everybody knows this, I keep emphasising that. So why not Smeg Chris? And then I did the, the video, I put it together, and then I asked my cousin Simon to create the theme tune for it, and he did. And as soon as all that was edited together, that music was there, I posted it. And here I am. I'm on YouTube. The other thing, while we're on the subject of Smeg Chris, is... I am thinking about bringing coppers to Smeg Chris on this channel, sorry, on that channel, uh, but re-edited so that there's no copyright infringement. I haven't decided upon that yet. I don't know if you guys think I should. I mean, if you think I should, tell me. You know, there's a comment box down there, or as Kata17 calls it, the butt bar. I like that, the butt bar. Or I call description. I don't know why. <laughs> but I like butt bar, that's funny. And that's my YouTube story so far. So, um, I hope I didn't bore you too much. <sighs> I probably did. Just one more thing, those of you who have subscribed and watch my videos regularly, thank you. Anyway, it's time to go. I've bored you long enough. <laughs> Remember these links up here? Smeg Chris and Review and there's an Unleashed as well. <laughs> and I will see you when I see you. And so until then... Peace out. Don't forget to subscribe up there somewhere. Leave comments in the book bar. <laughs>